Hello and welcome in part 2. Uh, now we will talk about the engine, the heart of the bike. As you know, it's a 175 uh, four stroke engine that generates, uh, I think it's about 9 horsepower stock. So, uh, what I did to the engine, it was the uh, Total strip down, everything glass blasted, all new bearings, all new seals. I uh, got a new piston. I had to downsize the cylinder, so they put me a new, uh, new, new sleeve, sleeving in it, so it fits the uh, the piston. Mm, I did the crank also, so I wanted to have everything uh, stock. I taken apart the Dynastart and uh, clean it well and uh, I didn't replace the brushes because they were quite good just uh, sanded them and now it, it, it uh, spins quite well on the start as you can see I'm uh, running uh, two batteries it's quite big some of you will say it's an overkill a 12 volts not 6 volts so they uh, they connected in uh, in parallel i decided to have uh, the big ones because i have a tray for two batteries and i bought those uh, rubber strap from the club and the smaller batteries uh, wouldn't fit and i wanted to look it uh, nice there's a lot of power uh, when cranking so uh, I think it's good because now with all this uh, uh, really good compression uh, you basically need this you need this on this bike otherwise it will be hard to start it I guess so you can see a bit of tape I'm just uh, securing it from uh, making accidental uh, short I am not running a thing on the stock uh, uh, in ignition coil that were this coil was came with the bike, so I just refreshed it. I, I measured the uh, the resistance, and it looked all right. Uh, hopefully, when it will get hot, uh, once the bike is running, uh, it will be st still all right. Usually, uh, when there's a fault, it will uh, appear when it will get uh, hot. So we will see. I didn't do many miles well. I think I made like less than a mile around the house on this bike so far. As you can see, this uh, capacitor <laughs> that's a temporary fix. I had it fixed somewhere else, but uh, it was not the final position, so uh, I put it this way. I put it extra grounding wire because in the previous position uh, I didn't have this bracket and it was fixed a bit uh, also unprofessionally, let's say and uh, there was a poor ground so now i added extra ground i won't have it on the end i think unless well if, again the frame is painted the powder coated so this clump has no ground on it so i had to put extra extra ground uh, to the bracket holding the capacitor uh, i will uh, tig weld uh, two uh, small nuts here so then this can be fixed not held by the o-ring so possibly I will have to keep that uh, ground wire. I will make it a bit short because now it's quite long. And I cover the terminals with some uh, plastic cups. So again, the, nothing. If anything drops there, uh, I won't make a short. Mm, I redo all the wiring. It's um, covered with some automotive tape. Uh, uh, high temperature resistant uh, on the front uh, I did use a bit different uh, tape it's uh, like a bit fluffy so it's soundproofing so nothing will uh, even if something vibrates and hits the body it won't uh, wear the paint and uh, won't make noise so this one is a bit different uh, because it's running all the way underneath the floorboards even though I have a shield underneath um, but I wanted to use the tape that is uh, uh, basically resistance to, uh, to water uh, won't keep the water 
because you don't want that to be wet all the time. Uh, the wires are all the uh, automotive spec. I basically uh, had some spare uh, car harness that I use as a donor, and I basically chopped it into pieces and uh, reused the wires because they uh, uh, they resistant to uh, a bit higher temperatures than you can find those standard wires in the shop. I wanted to avoid buying some by accident some Chinese wire that will melt quite easily. Okay, so we spoke about the batteries, um, about the coil, and now there's something here that you possibly don't recognize. This white bit is a new holder for my uh, fully electronic voltage regulator and, uh, uh, and the relay. It's a high current relay, again from Nissan. Uh, the thing is applied to... Uh, on the uh, front heated windscreen so it can uh, cope with really big current that's why the choice this uh, white thing uh, with a uh, o-ring here this was uh, 3d printed it's not the final product yet it's like a prototype i would say it's not the uh, last uh, well it's not the best quality and not the, the material that i will use on the final product uh, I designed this myself uh, to fit this uh, regulator. The regulator is a, a DVR2D, which is a product uh, from England, made by the guy. And uh, I checked that regulator on the uh, oscilloscope, and uh, everything is matching the description uh, of this product, and it's specially uh, made for for Dynastat, so uh, it's basically plug and play, there's four wires you just connect them and it works you don't need to switch it off uh, when the bike is not running uh, it won't drain your battery I measure that so uh, good things basically once you start the bike even on idle your red light on your uh, speedo goes off so uh, you're getting the uh, good voltage so it's charging, it's not draining your batteries, and if you have two batteries like me, uh, it's good to uh, keep them healthy. So that's one thing. Uh, I think the body is made from aluminium, and then there's some uh, uh, filling material that uh, transfers the heat. On this bit here I will have also a cover with some uh, openings on the back, so uh, or on the front, depending how you will fit the cover, it goes either way. It, won't, it will be fitted uh, tight, uh, there will be some uh, uh, some raw also in the cover, so it will just uh, tight fit on here. I didn't uh, 3D print the cover yet. Uh, I will have that possibly done in uh, next weeks. Again, uh, the terminal. Uh, I'm running this 6... Uh, Six, uh, six block terminal uh, I think it's rated to 25 amps uh, not sure what current you're getting on the crank but uh, it's uh, it's not the constant current so uh, it will cope I started the bike many times on this and it didn't get hot so it's uh, fitted on the uh, I'm not sure if you can see on a stainless steel plate that is uh, exactly cut it like the uh, I think you can slightly see the edge like this uh, to, to the shape of the uh, the holder. The final product will be a bit higher because I have uh, too little gap between the the top of the terminal and this uh, holder. So I'll increase it by about four mil. You need to think about this plate that comes here with your uh, tail. That will uh, then give me still ten. Uh, millimeters on the on the top from my cover, so it should be nice. Mm. Everything is terminated. I soldered the ends, and uh, batteries are connected together, of course. Uh, positives here, and then uh, the positive here. There's also some feed straight from this terminal to the bike. Uh, the grounds. 
I'm running. I asked that question yeah, before to you guys. Uh, so I'm grounding here. I got two wires crimped to one, and then they're going separately to the uh, to the batteries. So they're not connected between each other. They both going to the engine. I didn't ground the frame because uh, basically there was no point. Uh, the whole harness. Uh, have some additional uh, grounding wires to the to the bits, like the uh, the back lamp, front lamp, the uh, speedo indicators. So there was no need. Uh, I didn't do it. I could, but uh, I didn't. Again, uh, I didn't use the the colors uh, as per uh, the diagram available. Uh, I used whatever wire colors I had. Some of them they well they they double tripled the colors, but I added the uh, ID marks on all of them. And obviously, those IDs not always uh, stick to the diagram uh, because I had to make some smaller sections. So like uh, yes, you got like uh, thirty. You got uh, you got your fifteen, but then uh, for the uh, the back lamps and stuff, I use some other numbers, and I put all that on my diagram so I know what is what. Sometimes I slightly oversize the wires to uh, have uh, a small voltage drop, so my lights are quite bright, and then I hope they won't uh, won't get. Uh, uh, dimmer, I think it's called dimmer. Dim when uh, you will uh, ride. Okay, you can see that the muffler is missing. Uh, the reason for that is that I'm making a new one, my old one. Uh, uh, I'll show you. All right, that's my old one. Uh, it was butchered, not once, uh, it was more than once, and uh, as you can see there's a lot of stuff flying inside, a lot of welds, some of bits went inside, it's not the best welding, <laughs> I just gave it to my friend that uh, was learning and asked him, uh, you know, you can practice on this one, just cover all the holes, because I will try to run my bike in the beginning, because making the new muffler will take me a while. And well, it's a disaster, but it was a disaster before, so uh, uh, no loss. I did make a few meters on this one, but then you can see all the all the crap that came from the from the mufflers everywhere. Uh, so I'm making a new one from stainless. I didn't uh, order one from uh, from the club. I thought. Uh, well, the new one is made from the same material, I, I presume, so uh, it would end up in 50 years, the same like this one. Uh, maybe not, but I thought, uh, let's give it a go. So I designed a muffler. You see that's a frame. I will have to redo it because uh, my pipe is coming here, so I need to uh, decrease this gap a bit. So this was uh, plasma cutted on the CNC, CNC plasma cutting machine so uh, it goes basically oh, sorry uh, it goes basically really accurate to what you uh, what you give them now let's see the other bit so uh, that's uh, that's the main bit right the main uh, body then you got this uh, bigger pipe that your air guide comes here and then you got this that goes to the uh, to your uh, exhaust manifold. So uh, I'll make this cup, it's not yet welded. You see, it fits really, really nice. To do that, I had to produce a stamping die. So I made a stamping die. And uh, I pressed this cup on the uh, on my press. It's a manual press, 20 ton, but I didn't, I didn't use all that 20 tons. It was less, and then the, the whole, uh, 
for was cut it on the uh, milling machine uh, with some offset as uh, the uh, the stock one so I got the uh, body inside you have some dividers as per uh, stock unit and here I got some uh, insides that uh, this will go I think somewhere there and then you I will have two pipes coming out of it so it still requires welding and patching those edges uh, uh, this is a longer project then you have some uh, brace that will uh, keep I have, I have three of those uh, that will keep the pipes those two coming out of it and uh, I also bought like uh, three banded uh, sections so this pipe will uh, go here then it ends here uh, I will show you that on the cut and then it basically mixes and then uh, it will flow out there all right so that's a long shot but uh, hopefully I will uh, soon uh, finish and I will uh, show you the result and uh, I hope it won't be too loud <laughs> because my neighbors will kill me uh, let's go back to the bike uh, so we spoke about the uh, the engine uh, so far I think my uh, my clutch and my uh, gearbox uh, cables are set correctly uh, only problem I have currently is to go into the first one but it was more because I uh, torqued the uh, uh, this too much and then I actually couldn't uh, rotate it uh, uh, really uh, really easy so uh, uh, for some reason all this bit slightly uh, goes off uh, thing is this pipe here is not uh, not fixed to, uh, to this handle and it can slide slightly so I think that's the problem uh, but you, you want to keep it tight unless this will uh, simply slide off so either I will put some uh, flat bearing on the back or uh, a really flat washer I will see so it will be easy to, uh, to rotate but then uh, the second went perfectly I didn't try the third and the fourth yet uh, my street is too short okay so coming back uh, okay, so we did the uh, talk about the exhaust uh, uh, I did some uh, slight polish to the uh, to the hub uh, with sandpaper on the uh, on the turning machine. Again, we spoke about the uh, the nuts, the stainless steel, and uh, yeah, I also made a aluminium cup for my uh, for my uh, hub. It's a bit tight fit. I've got some space on my desk, so I'll show you explain how it works. Okay, so uh, that's my cup. Uh, I'm running uh, my bike. I have a stock uh, washer that I adjusted to my cup. How it's made? Uh, it's a tight fit uh, with the O-ring, as you can see here. So basically, you you press this in, and then it it secures it. I didn't uh, go f over uh, I don't know 10 miles per hour so far. Uh, what I hope it's well balanced, so I don't think it will uh, fall off. Uh, I will check and uh, let you know. If somebody is interested, uh, let me know. I, as you can see, I got some spares. Same for my uh, uh, swing arm cover. So they made from aluminium, uh, high grade aluminium. You can polish them, or you can keep them like this. They're a nice piece. So I have two, two, two extra. Let me know if you want one. And uh, you can see I got one on my bike. It's a bit. It was polished, but that, I did that polishing like four years ago. So uh, all this uh, other work that I did on the bike, it's not. It's a bit greasy and stuff. But uh, I will give it a, a final polish, or maybe I'll even. Uh, glass blast some uh, Henkel logo on it I'll think about it and 
damper uh, unit from uh, for the club again uh, I changed my uh, I'm not sure if you can see my uh, air filter I think that's from uh, previous models of Henkel uh, this is holding on the uh, temporarily on the o-ring because uh, one of the uh, those uh, holding features they, they snapped so I need to weld it uh, it was blasted and uh, coated with uh, the primer ah the bing the bing uh, I have some issues with my bing uh, as you can remember from my previous posts uh, I as you can see I'm missing the uh, mixture screw uh, it was basically a homemade mixture screw so now I'm uh, making new one or well, my friend is making new one for me uh, that uh, basically dimensions are taken from some other uh, bank carburetor thank you for that Martin and uh, I will let you know how it runs with that uh, adjusted if uh, if we will still have bad results I will uh, convert to some Mikuni uh, Mikuni carburetor with a uh, with a choke I think that would be helpful for this bike uh, okay I got some quite big uh, fuel filter again uh, the tank was a bit uh, rotten on the beginning but uh, it didn't require any welding uh, there was some rust inside, but it was uh, blasted, uh, sandblasted inside as good as possible. But then there were some uh, leftovers, of course, and uh, there's still some rust on the parts where we couldn't reach. So I basically fitted that big uh, glass, uh, big glass uh, fuel filter, so I can know if it's. Uh, too much uh, stuff coming out of it or it's blocked it's easy mm -hmm. to see uh, I was worried that those small plastic ones they would get stuck on the beginning quite often so uh, I did that there's not much stuff coming out of the, uh, the bike is a good flow so uh, that is not a problem for my uh, my engine uh, issues with, uh, fuel starvation okay we spoiled the cup uh, the hubs I sand, uh, sand, sanded them, yes, sanded them on the uh, turning machine. I did some uh, polishing on the front one, but uh, not that good. Uh, I will possibly have to do it again. Uh, I did some, uh, some, you know, some tapes to be sure that it, they won't wear the fresh paint. All this was, uh, this mechanism was taken apart and cleaned. You can take it apart, so I, I, I advise you to do, and then uh, plenty of grease, and I got this new one, so I will uh, regrease it from time to time. Uh, what else? Ah, I fitted the connector between the nose and uh, the rest, and uh, the connector is fitted on the back of the of the body here, so it's easy to disconnect if you need to take this off. Uh, oh, I was supposed to show you the uh, indicators. I thought they, they working again uh, correctly. Okay, so on. You see, the same speed. Let's put this one. So also. So back, back is there. Same speed. So I'll give you the uh, the name of this uh, device for indicators. It's quite, it wasn't that, that expensive, I think it's good, once you fit your trailer it is hopeful, it is good because uh, the, the speed won't change. Right, so that's uh, everything about my bike so far. I will give you updates once I finish my exhaust, I will let you know how it sounds. Uh, thank you for watching.